For the first time in years, AMD is punching toe-to-toe -to -toe with NVIDIA's high-end GPUs. The recent RX 6800 and 6800 XT demonstrated just how powerful the RDNA 2 architecture is and just how competitive it is. Those GPUs are definitely worth considering, that is, once they finally reach some reasonable capacity on store shelves, but this I cannot say the same for. This is AMD's new $1,000 RX 6900 XT, which claims to offer the fastest PC gaming experience that you can possibly buy. Its main objective is taking down Nvidia's $1,500 RTX 3090, and that's going to be the main point of discussion in this review. But I think the main question that we need to ask ourselves is who would buy this over an RTX 3080 or even a 6800 XT, GPUs that are hundreds of dollars cheaper and may not be that far off in terms of performance. So let's dive right in. Compared to the 6800 XT, the 6900 XT has 8 more compute units and ray accelerators, 512 more stream processors, but the same memory configuration, board power, and clock speeds. So roughly 11% more compute silicon under the hood, but for a 54% price jump. The 6800 XT has an MSRP of 650, whereas the 6900 XT starts at a grand US. Keyword there being starts at, because as we've seen, the actual pricing of these cards is a bit more in reality. That's also the case for most of Nvidia's 30 series GPUs, excluding the Founders Edition models, which do seem to be selling at the listed MSRP, but only in selected regions and outlets. So seeing as we've had so many GPU releases quite recently, instead of dragging you guys through a ton of graphs like I usually do, let's get to the bottom line on this one quickly. At 1440p resolution, I found the 6900 XT to put up a pretty solid fight against Nvidia's RTX 3090 and for $500 less. It's a bit faster in some, virtually tied in others, and loses marginally in a couple here and there. This graph shows the percentage of performance gained over the 6900 XT over the RTX 3090, and especially when you consider the price to performance, the 6900 XT is of course the better pick. But that lead fades away when we look at 4K resolution. Now the results are in strong favor of the RTX GPU. The 3090 has a much faster memory configuration and bandwidth than the 6900 XT, and that's likely why it's doing a bit better here at this higher resolution. Of course though, that price difference, $1,000 versus versus $1,500. Considering that, the 6900 XT looks pretty damn good, except when you compare it to an RTX 3080 or even one of AMD's own GPUs, the 6800 XT. Remember, there's just an 11% increase in compute units here for the 6900 XT over the 6800 XT, and funnily enough, that's the performance increase that we see here in Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1440p. That lead increases to around 16% when we look at 4K, and that might be due to the slightly higher texture unit count and texture fill rate on the 6900 XT. But as we saw in those initial graphs, the 6900 XT isn't faster than the 3090 in everything, and I want to make it clear that I never recommended the 3090 as a gaming GPU in the first place. Actually, I can't remember a single reviewer that did. You'd be totally mad to spend more than double the cost of an RTX 3080 for around 10 to 15% more gaming performance. In fact, the 3090 is the worst price to performance new GPU that you can buy right now. So the fact that the 6900 XT can beat it in that arena, while also beating it marginally outright in some titles, I just don't find that impressive. And just to be totally clear, this isn't even about Team Green versus Team Red or picking a side. Even against the $650 6800 XT, the 6900 XT just looks unjustifiable. In Death Stranding at 4K, I found just a 7.5% performance difference between them. So I guess what AMD wants to see and market are graphs like this, graphs where the 6900 XT is at the top of the stack, offering slightly more than the 3090 for a whole lot less money. But it's just not that impressive considering other high performance GPUs like the 6800 XT and the RTX 3080. It's even less impressive when we consider the ray tracing performance that feels a whole generation behind what Nvidia's Ampere GPUs can currently do. Here we're looking at the new Watch Dogs Legion at 1440p with the ray tracing preset set to high. Now the 6900 XT actually beats the 3090 in this game without ray tracing enabled.
old, but turning it on creates a clear cut in the gaming experience between them. Then factor in DLSS, which a good deal of ray tracing enabled games in the future will likely include, and the gap grows even wider. You might have also noticed the periodic frame time spikes on the AMD GPU here, that occurred both with and without ray tracing enabled, so hopefully we can see a driver update to correct that. But even in a title where that doesn't occur, ray tracing performance is really lagging behind Nvidia, even without factoring in DLSS. Now at this point, most of you get it, so we'll end this part of the discussion here. AMD just isn't competitive when it comes to these graphics features. AMD also said in a recent media briefing that the 6900 XT is primarily a high-end gaming GPU and not focused on performance when it comes to creative applications. And here you can see why they said that. In Blender, the $1,000 6900XT loses to the $400 3060Ti, and that's without factoring in the faster optics render engine for RTX GPUs. And I've mentioned in this review that the RTX 3090 is also a hard GPU to recommend based on gaming performance alone, but I can still recommend it when it comes to creative applications or render engines based around CUDA. In my opinion, that's really the only thing that the 3090 has going for it, otherwise it'd easily be in the same bucket as the 6900 XT, a really expensive GPU that is unjustifiable for gaming. Although some creative users can benefit from the 3090's 24GB of GDDR6X memory and excellent application support. And I'm aware that the 3090 lacks the proper workstation drivers to make it competitive in engineering, simulation and research applications which is a real shame for those users, but but that's not actually relevant to the majority of creative apps and render engines. So for 3D artists, professional video editors and users of that kind, the 3090 can still make sense if you find yourself running into a video memory limit. The 6900 XT on the other hand, I find impossible to justify for any user. If this is truly a gaming focused GPU as AMD have claimed, it should be substantially faster than an RTX 3080 or 6800 XT. Then when simple functions such as recording my own desktop don't even work, I find the price tag of $1,000 US just straight up offensive. That's not even factoring in what the real price of this GPU is actually going to be when it hits store shelves, and whether there will be any reasonable stock in the first place. The 6900 XT uses the best silicon among the entire Radeon 6000 lineup, and naturally that means much lower yields than the 6800 and 6800 XT. Even those GPUs are an extremely rare sight for now. So in closing, among all of the recent GPUs that have launched in the last few months, I feel like you could justify any single one of them based off price, performance in your region, or the features that may or may not matter to you. The 6900 XT on the other hand, I just can't find any reason to justify it at all. In some games, it is the fastest GPU that you can buy, but when that is just, you know, 5 to 10% sometimes over a 6800 XT or a 3080, it is just not worth it in any sense. So I think we'll end the review there. If you're interested in buying some other GPUs, I will have them linked down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.